Good evening to all of you. So uh, let me just uh, provide uh, basically a high level overview about the module uh, initially. Uh, so according to the plan that I have uh, developed, uh, we are going to have about, uh, as I could remember, around uh, 13 to 14 sessions. So um, basically, we start with uh, laying the foundation and uh, gradually we will uh, drive through various concepts of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning aspects and uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, discuss about uh, some of the technologies, applications which are being uh, widely used in the AI industry as well. So uh, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm uh, Kanika Vidanage. Um, I uh, completed my PhD in artificial intelligence. Uh, basically, I'm a researcher. Uh, so uh, if you just Google, uh, you might be able to locate uh, my publications. So, so far I have done uh, about uh, close to 40 publications uh, in the area of artificial intelligence. Uh, my specializations are mainly into healthcare informatics. So basically, uh, <clears throat> I use uh, AI uh, and uh, AI concepts uh, to uh, improve the quality of life of human beings and also uh, to uh, improve the use experience of patients uh, and doctors and various stakeholders associated with the medical discipline, mainly not limited to that. So uh, I will share uh, some of my experiences uh, as a researcher uh, with you while we are going through this subject. <clears throat> uh, so currently, uh, actually, I am employed as the head of research and uh, AI at uh, Oral Corporation, so which is uh, also into AI and we do a lot of AI-related stuff, local and overseas. So there are about uh, close to uh, 17 uh, AI engineers uh, working in my team, uh, covering various aspects. So that's a very brief overview uh, about myself. Uh, so I think, uh, I, I don't know about the, uh, total participation count. So currently I can see there are about 10 people. So basically uh, uh, when we are discussing, uh, I'm planning to do uh, various uh, hands-on implementations. Uh, so I, uh, I'm expecting you also to join with me and do those uh, implementations uh, with me. So I will explain the codings and why we are doing those things uh, step by step. So uh, we will uh, start with the basics and we will gradually take up the pace. Uh, there might be some interruptions with the power cut. I have a setup uh, to power my internet connection, uh, but uh, to be frank, uh, this is the first time I'm experiencing doing a lecture in a sort of a ambiguous situation with the electricity. I don't know when, I think according to the schedule, somewhere around 7.30, there will be a power cut. So, but uh, I have a setup, we'll see how it goes. Uh, <clears throat> on, right. So, uh, we have 10 uh, participants uh, right now. So I think uh, we are good to start. Uh, right, so I have shared a slide. I hope you might have got it maybe. Uh, and this is another slide which I didn't share, right? I will share it today, uh, maybe after the lecture. So you can have that as well. So this is a basically, uh, this provides a high level overview about uh, the discipline of AI and data science. 
and why it is taking up a very high demand these days, etc., etc. We'll have better to learn about the domain that we are going to investigate initially. <clears throat> so, uh, usually uh, I share the slides uh, close to the lecture because I want uh, uh, the participants to have the curiosity about what we are uh, going to discuss uh, rather than the contents that are in the slides uh, we discuss the practical perspectives and implementations actually i use the slide as a uh, sort of a guiding aid to myself to control the discussion that i am doing during the session so uh, with that note we'll uh, make a start uh, I think I am clearly audible to all of you, right? <clears throat> am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Right. <laughs> okay, so uh, now data science, right? We refer data science as the uh, set and artificial intelligence machine learning and uh, some other uh, areas, we refer those as subsets of the data science. So basically, uh, uh, there are multiple ways we can solve problems when it comes to uh, AI and data science discipline. I think that is a very fascinating thing. If we think with our real world life, you know, for certain patients, sometimes when they are sick, amoxicillin might not work. They might be allergic to amoxicillin, right? Then doctors might give penicillin or sephorex or ampicillin, another antibiotic, right? Similarly, uh, in the AI and data science discipline, uh, we have a lot of technologies available. Uh, so once we uh, reach to some level with our understanding about the concepts, we might be able to decide the most eligible technique that can be utilized to solve a problem. Right? Because uh, for, for certain uh, areas, for, when you are trying to solve certain problems, some technologies might not work. For an example, let me share a small experience. Uh, I did a research project with uh, one of a student uh, and uh, he wants to do classification of moonstones. Sandakada Pahanawal classified that, right? According to the era, I can name it. Yugaya Anu Sandakada Pahana classified that, right? But the problem is uh, when we are planning to develop that sort of systems, uh, using machine learning related approaches, we might need to have very large data sets, right? You know, there are repositories like UCL, Kaggle, where you can download data sets, but there are no data sets about Sadhagada uh, Pahana available, right? So uh, he faced a lot of issues uh, because initially he has developed the proposal uh, telling that he's going to use uh, machine learning for this without doing a proper background search. But uh, when the research bega began, uh, he identified that data sets is going to be a curse for him. Uh, so uh, with that approach, actually, I advise him to chain the, uh, chain the technology. So from machine learning, we shifted to ontology engineering, right? So you can maybe Google on that. During our program, we will discuss ontology engineering as well. So that is another uh, evolving and very uh, important advanced branch in uh, AI, where you can work with limited amount of data. Usually, if you are using ontology engineering approaches, we don't need actually data sets. So in ontology engineering, actually, we interview people we get the knowledge, right? For an example, if let's say you want to develop a knowledge base about COVID-19. COVID-19 is a very recent disease, 
you might not have large data sets but currently you have right you might not have because the uh, it, it became a pandemic therefore though that it's not that much uh, older we have large volumes data but usually in certain disciplines we don't have large amounts of data so if you want to develop a knowledge base for covid-19 and assume we don't have significantly sized data sets as well what you would do let's say you can interview with general physicians or medical doctors you might ask what are the symptoms of covid-19 uh, and how you treat uh, vaccination procedures right you can interview them and get the knowledge then once you get that knowledge we can create machine understandable knowledge models we refer it as human and both human and machine understandable we use technologies like rdf and owl that is a resource description framework and ontology web language so we can basically uh, represent the knowledge of the consultant in a machine understandable manner then we can couple that with reasoning engines or maybe a chatbot right so if a user if a user end user when end user types certain things about uh, <clears throat> the covid-19 maybe so it will basically as so a chatbot will be the interface it will accept the user input then it will go to the ontology engine or the knowledge model that we created reasoning will happen and it will uh, uh, provide us a response some some something similar as we are getting a response from a consultant right so i think that is a very uh, nice fascinating approach which is currently av available and evolving uh, in the uh, arena of uh, artificial intelligence so uh, now uh, now what is the basic difference between artificial intelligence machine learning and statistical analysis let me start with machine learning now in machine learning actually we use mathematical and statistical concepts plus computational concepts so machine learning is a mixture or or a blend of mathematical concepts and computing concepts together right that we refer to machine learning so uh, statistical uh, analysis is another separate discipline we are using statistics only right we can predict analyze patterns analyze trends and we can do various forecasting like for an example using things like uh, regression right it's a good example for uh, statistical analysis so i repeat statistical analysis is purely based on maths and stats uh, when it comes to machine learning we use uh, statistical concepts and computational concepts like data frames then uh, we work with data sets right so it's a, it's a combination then how those two things are different from artificial intelligence now artificial intelligent concepts are derived uh, basically uh, after analyzing about the behaviors of living creatures i will not say as humans it is living creatures <clears throat> basically we use we we now and there are concepts like swarm intelligence you can google and check right maybe you might have you might have heard swarm intelligence concepts have been derived how insects are behaving right you know how bees bees are behaving how ants are behaving right they behave as flocks as clusters they uh, there is a there is a way how they communicate right Uh, if an ant identify some food right uh, so then then the that ant will communicate that uh, message to the other people in the colony through pheromones right so those are biological zoological concepts uh, why are analyzing this biological zoological concepts computer scientists have developed certain algorithms right so what very good example is uh, swarm intelligence then neural networks right neural networks is all about how our brain works inside our brain we have neurons 
right? These neurons are communicating with each other through electrical impulses. So why are analyzing that anatomy? Computer scientists have come up with neural networks. Then we have convolutional neural networks, a, a special form. We refer it as CNA. So uh, computer scientists have come up with this mechanism via analyzing the visual cortex, the, the backside of our brain. Right? <clears throat> via analyzing that part. So basically, uh, uh, when we analyze biological concepts. I am not telling it's only as uh, uh, human concepts, right? Because ants and genetic algorithms, that's about how mutations happen, right? How inheritance happen, how features of the parents are being transmitted to kids, children, right? So that mechanism has been identified and genetic algorithm concepts have been developed. 